Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Tristan Claridge and I'm the convener of the Social Capital Research Group. So our group promotes the advancement of social capital theories and, and we support anyone who wants to use the concept in research or practical applications. We have uh, members from about 130 different countries around the world and, and we have an active discussion group of over a thousand members and we hold regular webinars from researchers and practitioners. So in this session, we welcome Mariam Chakbadsa for a presentation and discussion about social capital in the digital age. Uh, Mariam has a master's degree in national and international administration and policy from the University of Potsdam. Since then, she's been doing a PhD. And she's also actively involved in a project called Grenzolus um, Across Boundaries. The project is offered by the World University Services, and it's a cooperation between vocational schools and guest speakers, students from Africa, Asia, Latin America, and cooperation aims at empowering responsibility towards sustainable development in vocational schools and support in the intercultural relations. So over to you, Mariam. Um, thank you and um, good evening from Germany. And um, I'm really happy that I got the chance um, to make the contribution um, and to speak about the topic, um, the social capital. Um, how it transforms, um, and uh, I chose uh, the vocational education and training as a case study in Georgia um, because it is also um, the topic of my research um, work um, that uh, I'm conducting at the University of Potsdam. Um, and before um, uh, I and start uh, with my presentation, I would like to um, give the um, short overview of the um, topics. Um, I would um, first of all start uh, with the, um, um, the aim and goal of the presentation as well as then come, will come um, the um, research terms. Um, the next topic will be the case, um, case study. Um, the um, tendencies, how the vocational education and training and um, uh, in terms of uh, changing business models um, is going in Georgia. And um, the last part <clears throat> will be the final remarks and uh, findings. Um, I would be really grateful to get your feedback, questions, critical remarks. Um, that would really help me also to um, further um, conduct uh, and research this um, spectrum. Um, yeah, uh, so um, I have uh, following um, aspects um, uh, in the, uh, for the uh, present uh, presentation today. Um, the first one would be, uh, why does uh, Georgia need a non-traditional co-production-based uh, vocational education system? Um, and I will also like to explain what uh, I mean and what the experts mean under the term in traditional co-production. Um, what is the um, end goal of um, this um, reform that is going uh, right now in Georgia? Um, in case of Georgia, this is the, of course, uh, to provide the digital social capital that could be um, um, defined uh, in the context, in the Georgian context, um, as the uh, transformation from a supply-driven vocational education to the demand-driven one. Um, and as a next um, topic um, also that I would like to emphasize is um, the contextual factors um, that <clears throat> Uh, confront the um, reform process in Georgia and um, hinder um, to um, accelerate the process. Um, so, <laughs> um, as for the research terms, uh, I uh, have uh, seven, like three categories um, that are um, the driving um, ones. Um, these are the um, business models change, how do they change, um, the definition and correlation of non-traditional co-production with the business uh, models change and transformation uh, in the government narrative. And um, the last one is um, 
the um, digital social capital definition of itself and um, as the end goal of um, these uh, reforms. Um, we let's start with the business model. Um, uh, I uh, will. Um, I'm. Um, I'm going to speak about the business models in the e-government narrative uh, from more a uh, broad perspective, um, because um, I must admit that uh, this was also like a little bit new field for me, um, and I wanted to find the correlation uh, with the Georgian, uh, with the reforms that are ongoing in Georgia. Uh, so um, I present here um, the broad uh, general approach. Um, uh, in literature, we uh, can see um, that um, there are two broad families of uh, business um, models, um, the pipelines and uh, the pipes, sorry, the pipes and um, also the platforms. Um, the pipes are defined as a more linear business model uh, where the products and services are produced and created and then um, are ready to be sold. Um, as for the platforms, uh, the platforms are um, acknowledged as the mainstream for the 21st century uh, because the platforms um, are based on uh, the correlation uh, between uh, cooperation and co-production uh, between different uh, stakeholders and um, uh, it enables, uh, for instance, the consumers to use the created value and also to participate in this process. Um, the thing uh, why it um, correlates uh, the, um, with the digital social capital is the uh, fact that um, e-government um, changed the uh, interactions uh, between stakeholders. Um, and the platform is the good example of this, uh, the, because uh, in the beginning, the platforms like the Facebook, for instance, um, were, they, were um, the first goal of those platforms has been um, to um, um, regulate and to save the private contacts. But um, they, the, those platforms uh, then later uh, moved to the business had uh, got the uh, different meaning and um, got uh, very to to an asset uh, for the big companies, business companies, and uh, not only the large ones, but also for the small uh, companies and for the startups. And um, this uh, fact uh, turned uh, into an asset uh, because uh, um, the fact that um, they could cooperate and collaborate without um, um, being in face to face to face um, turned out to be very cost effective. Um, and um, therefore, um, there are recent articles that say that social capital is the uh, outcome of this process. And um, the social capital nowadays uh, is not created and accumulated, um, not anymore only on offline, but also online. Um, um, and um, therefore, the electronic platforms are um, essential tools. Um, we also see uh, in the um, literature um, that um, successful plat platforms um, have like three indicators, um, connection, gravity, and flow. Um, the connection means that uh, how um, easy it is to log in on the platform, um, the gravity, how, uh, how much um, does it uh, attract uh, the other stakeholders and the flow, how does it, whether it provides the uh, opportunity to co cooperate. Uh, and in order to uh, achieve these goals, um, experts um, give three uh, tools, um, the toolbox that regulates this uh, logging process, magnet um, that enables to um, attract consumers, stakeholders, and matchmakers. Um, this is the um, correlation between um, supply and um, demand. 
um, what was especially interesting for, uh, for me um, was that um, the same experts say that um, these online platforms uh, don't need all these three tools. Uh, for instance, um, there, it can happen that one platform it can concentrate only on toolbox and offer uh, consumers um, just uh, a very um, smooth and flexible logging options. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Sorry. Um, this process uh, of the platforms and um, creation uh, of this um, digital social capital that comes from this networking um, brings the other concept, um, which is the co-production. Um, co-production uh, is a uh, very, yeah, um, long, has a long standing um, history. Um, but um, recently, um, the um, article by Cecilia and Tarantino, um, they decided to um, introduce a distinction uh, between traditional and non-traditional co-production, uh, which means that in, within a government narrative uh, can be called as non-traditional co-production, and non-traditional co-production is acknowledged that as a spectrum um, that changes the classical paradigm and is um, based on ECT platforms, um, e-government platforms. Um, and um, what is uh, the important thing, uh, this, these are the variables uh, of uh, non-traditional co-production. There are two interrelated variables, the modes of interaction, uh, how the stakeholders interact with each other uh, and cooperate, and uh, the expected outcomes, what is expected uh, from this cooperation. Um, the two have this like the uh, precise, more pre uh, precise context uh, in terms of e government. Um, um, I decided uh, to share uh, the e-government um, design definition um, introduced by Pollard, uh, where the experts say that e-government uh, can uh, promote um, different tendencies. Um, uh, and uh, e-government um, on the context, local context uh, basis uh, can uh, empower the traditional bureaucratic standards or promote networking and wider concepts of governance. So um, because of um, digital social capital networking platforms, um, I uh, shared also in my research um, the final uh, definition, which means that uh, e-government design in nowadays uh, aims at uh, promoting networking and collaborate co-production uh, on the ECT information and um, communication technology phases. Um, another um, important um, framework um, uh, this, uh, that also speaks uh, about uh, digital social capital um, in terms of vocational education um, could be um, the fact that um, digital, the definition of digital social capital in, in the articles um, with respect to the education um, seems to be uh, more outcome oriented, uh, which means that um, the importance of uh, information and communication technologies uh, is uh, emphasized and is considered also as a um, chance uh, for well-being uh, of uh, the society of, and improving the um, uh, conditions. Um, also, uh, um, the, um, the method uh, that it enables to measure the process uh, is the maturity models of e-governments. Um, this was also really interesting 
uh, thing because uh, it enables to understand in which condition uh, is the uh, certain country. Uh, and the maturity models of e governments, they are um, different, uh, have different characters, they might have uh, different names. Um, but uh, mostly they have the same principles, so which means that um, they demonstrate um, the evolution uh, of the government portals and platforms um, from like a more primitive way of publishing the information um, driving to more mature way, like a one-stop shop um, portal where um, the person had um, get uh, all uh, information and service. Um, uh, this um, and expected government uh, expected outcome uh, for me uh, when I'm exploring uh, the um, creation of social capital and the process uh, in Georgia is, as I mentioned above, um, the transformation um, of the uh, supply driven, driven vocational education to the demand driven one. Um, before I start to talk about Georgia more like in details, um, I would like to uh, mention what I mean um, and what the experts mean about this uh, with this distinction. Uh, supply driven um, vocational uh, education model is uh, the one that is just oriented to um, providing uh, the labor force um, and just to um, support uh, the economic growth of the country. But um, academic groups um, and recent articles say that this is not um, applicable uh, format uh, for sustainable development uh, because supply driven vocational education um, uh, demonstrates limited uh, possibilities uh, for um, uh, adapting or with ongoing challenges on the labor market. And uh, if we um, address uh, the publications in German vocational education system, um, there we will find that uh, experts speak about the necessity uh, of focusing on this uh, driving tendencies and changing business models um, and also to focus and um, to deal uh, and create the vocational education design on the integrity of business models, uh, competences and uh, work in architecture. Um, yeah, so um, and here comes the Georgia. Um, the, the Georgia is, uh, I think, not because I'm coming from Georgia, but uh, um, I think uh, the problems that uh, initiated um, the um, reform and uh, made governments um, to reform vocational education also turned into uh, the main drivers uh, why this all the reform started. Um, and there are um, several um, like key elements. Um, the first one uh, is the EU, uh, the association agreement uh, with the European Union, um, where um, the European association, uh, where the European Union says, and, um, demands from a um, Georgian government uh, to um, modernize vocational education and even uh, speaks about the necessity for sharing um, the role mo uh, models and access mo uh, models and examples from other countries. Um, the thing that Georgia had to overcome is that a work effect that vocational education has not been that popular um, uh, in our society um, because um, most of the families uh, were like concentrated on giving their children the chance to um, get the academic education and this uh, got us um, a lot with a created a lot of problems. 
um, we got the disbalance on the labor market. Um, more precisely, we have like three uh, places uh, for the employment, uh, but uh, there is this mismatch with these skills. Um, and also, um, the, this also increased uh, the uh, unemployment rates of the youth. Um, it is um, according to the statistics of 2020, the youth unemployment has been really high, almost like over 30%. Um, and this made also clear um, that uh, Georgian system had problems with consulting and academic planning. Um, therefore, uh, what uh, vocational education um, turned uh, into um, the priority, policy priority. Um, and uh, also, uh, one of the problems uh, that Georgia has is the um, limited uh, engagement of uh, business, private sector. Um, Georgian economy is dependent uh, on small and medium-sized um, business uh, actors, uh, but um, the problem is that they are mostly active in uh, low uh, valid uh, ac activities and actions. So um, Georgia um, decided and defined the government as um, defined the government vocational education as a chance for um, economic growth and also for cooperation. But uh, still, um, in spite of the reforms and progress, there are um, some problems uh, that correlate uh, with the gaps and uh, in terms of e-government narrative and um, demonstrate um, the um, problems uh, why the provision of digital social capital um, defined as this tran transition um, is uh, hindered. Uh, first of all, is the uh, status quo of e-government in Georgia, uh, and uh, the second one are the institutional configurations of vocational education. Um, I would start uh, with the e-government status quo, and uh, in 2014, um, there was uh, adopted the first uh, um, policy paper and these electronic services had been acknowledged uh, as um, a priority. And th at that time, um, there was a strong will for improving um, the conditions and uh, Georgia managed to get uh, high ranks uh, in the UN government development um, government uh, index. Um, but uh, since then, uh, we had certain gaps uh, and we moved to uh, 65th uh, place uh, and um, uh, the reports uh, demonstrate the problems as uh, limited human capital um, use uh, and also uh, limited social partnership and um, there is also the gap and a limited um, um, space uh, for uh, online collaboration between the stakeholders. Um, what is also a little bit pity um, because uh, Georgia has a good um, experience and um, the, I will, what, would like to show you also the example and this experience could be um, used in um, terms of vocational education and uh, could provide the same space uh, for the collaboration and networking in this field. Um, it is about the um, role model um, and we in Georgia, are, uh, the Georgians are really proud of it. Um, this is the House of Justice and um, it was created in 2011 um, and the driving principle is the one stop, one shop. Um, so this means that um, here, um, uh, keep both uh, the 
um, private sectors uh, as well uh, as uh, the um, customers, uh, the citizens um, can get uh, all the services in uh, one room. Um, there are three categories, um, the self-service area, uh, which means that uh, in this area, there are mostly the computer-based um, services like to take the photo, um, then co comes uh, the pump service area. And in this area, you can um, get the service where the um, time is, so uh, average time is the um, five minutes. Um, and a uh, prolonged service area is uh, where the time limit, where you need a service that um, needs more than five minutes. Um, this is the uh, website. Um, um, and also what is the uh, good thing about that, um, I hope it will work, um, is that you can also um, get the service just online, like business registration, property registration, enforcement service. And it shows that um, the, the, the platform is like, it, it's close to the search and a fourth level of the mature, maturity uh, model of e-government um, because uh, the last levels uh, in those maturity uh, models speak about, um, about the platforms uh, and open doors. So um, the vocational education spectrum really misses uh, such uh, space. Um, and um, the thing, um, uh, the other uh, important uh, thing that hinders this process um, is the bad institutional configurations itself. Um, we have uh, uh, one uh, problem uh, from the online perspective, um, Georgian um, institutions uh, need new strategy about e-government on e-government and digital modernization. And uh, it is now in the process of working and um, had to be uh, ended uh, in the um, December 2020 um, uh, um, or 20, no, 21, sorry. Um, and uh, from uh, the practical point of view, um, the thing is um, that um, in spite of the fact that governments adopted the a new law um, and improved law, on uh, vocational education, uh, the role of the private sector uh, was not really emphasized. Uh, what I mean uh, by this problem is that um, the private sector had mostly um, the role of the consultant. And uh, this feeling of uh, common ownership uh, was not in place. And um, uh, this uh, created also um, some problems and uh, made uh, the gaps uh, to remain. Um, and um, the new, new initiative in order to overcome this thing um, that the government made is uh, the Vocational Skills Agency created in two, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the beginning, in the end of 2020 was that. Um, and uh, this uh, uh, skills uh, agency um, was supposed uh, to fill in this uh, fill in these gaps and um, demonstrated uh, three um, levels of service provision. On the macro level, the skills agency where are uh, integrated uh, the private sector um, companies, um, had to um, consult again with the, with the ministry. Uh, and on the meta level, like the mid middle level, um, the, there emerged the duos. Uh, the duos are the newly created organizations and they are responsive for the organizational skills um, in the certain fields. Uh, and the last level was uh, about the co-authors, um, uh, training uh, enterprises and college. But still um, the problem um, 
this is a new institution, but the problem is that um, the common ownership is missing um, and uh, the central emphasis is uh, set on um, cons consulting and advisory um, option. Uh, and um, the other thing is that um, the space for co collaborating on the online basis um, is also not in place. Um, this is um, a very, I would say, a little bit sad, but uh, I'm trying to stay positive because um, we need some time, a um, long time to get some reforms implemented. Um, and um, what I mean about the online, uh, missing these online tools and platforms, um, here I also have another example. Um, this is the website um, of the vocational education um, in Georgia. And um, the, as they um, have adopted uh, or reorganized this website, uh, the government uh, stated um, that it would be on the basis of this uh, one stop one shop uh, platform. Um, but uh, when you enter um, to these options, you get just statistic and really um, poor um, um, information. Um, the feedback uh, is missing here. Um, two way of two way communication. So this um, hinders also this possibility of networking and linking between uh, stakeholders. Um, and uh, this is one of the problems. Um, the yeah, this is uh, what I was uh, talking about um, the new information portal to support and improve um, but um, there is a lot of work um, to do. Um, the findings um, that um, can be emphasized um, is that um, a lack, um, one of uh, the problem is the weak, still the weak social partnership. Um, this is the lack of private sector involvement, especially in sectoral, um, on the sectoral ter terms. Um, the e-government status quo, uh, where the, we see uh, the limited um, uh, possibility and spaces for the um, non-traditional co-production. Uh, but uh, I hope that uh, as soon as the e-government new digitalization strategy will be soon published, um, and I hope uh, that there will be um, some hints and uh, hopes on this topic. Um, and um, as a solution, possible solution, um, as far as I'm in Germany and I'm um, trying uh, to explore and compare um, the status quo of Georgia with the German uh, conditions, um, I decided um, to uh, explore whether Georgia and, uh, could in, import a certain elements uh, from Germany. Um, the thing that I've been um, really often asked is that uh, why Germany? Because uh, Germans' uh, e-government development is not so um, marvelous and perfect, um, but still, um, German uh, case uh, represents a good architecture of uh, divided uh, responsibilities um, and also gives uh, these um, private stakeholders, the business uh, models, um, the electronic space, the platforms to integrate with the government and also to be the part of uh, the process. Um, and the important things that uh, could be imported um, in Ge uh, Georgia would be the digital laboratories, shared responsibility mediating institutions, as well as, um, as I mentioned, the integration of electronic platforms. The digital laboratories um, would be a great asset, asset for Georgia 
because uh, in the digital laboratories are um, three um, stakeholders um, are cooperating with each other, the government, uh, private sector, and uh, also um, the scientists uh, and academics. Uh, so the product um, is based uh, on the multiple um, expectations and visions. Um, and uh, digital laboratories, there is also known in this um, Berlin Valley, uh, where uh, all these myths uh, about the digital laboratories who, um, uh, which uh, concentrate either on innovation or uh, modernization uh, of the service. As for the shared responsibility and mediating institutions, um, I would here uh, mention um, the e-government law um, that regulates, uh, and it's, a, it's just an uh, important thing, um, regulates the uh, access to the data and uh, also uh, um, the, which the architecture um, and integration of electronic platforms, it is an essential uh, for Georgia, especially in terms of career consulting. And if we go to um, this um, uh, website uh, in, in German, um, um, this is uh, the, I think, um, yeah, um, it's about the, um, uh, agency, uh, employment agency, um, there is a certain uh, options uh, for, for the use uh, to get all kinds of, um, in, not only information, but also download the applications and also get the feedback uh, from the government side. Uh, so we have here a clear example of the two-way communication. And also, um, the other example um, that uh, can be um, imported uh, from German case um, is um, the uh, government, uh, the GOVAT, um, the German Office for Vocational Education Corporation. Uh, and it is uh, more concentrated on uh, cooperation between private sectors and uh, the um, public sectors. And here also, the service is also really multidimensional. And uh, you can find here, uh, this is for instance, the portal of uh, all the countries uh, with them. Um, Germany has a um, bilateral cooperation. Um, and also get um, a service uh, um, for online service. And um, also, once again, um, there is this space and platform for cooperating. And one of the other things um, that um, Germany could, we, uh, could export, import uh, from Germany. Of, um, um, of, of where you can um, apply and inquire uh, whether um, uh, whether uh, your qualifications and um, diploma um, uh, is um, acceptable or, or whether you should uh, start uh, uh, some other courses. And also it is very interesting and uh, really a uh, real fruitful portal uh, for the private sectors uh, because uh, they can find uh, the um, possible persons who are interested in, um, in to be employed at their companies and they uh, can also um, communicate. So again, the feedback uh, is in place. Um, one of the aspects um, that uh, changed um, the conditions uh, on vocational uh, in terms of modernizing vocational education and uh, is related to, uh, with the German case um, is uh, driven by the uh, GIZ. Um, and this is the uh, project Good Governance uh, Promotion uh, in South Caucasus. And uh, what is a special, special thing uh, about this project um, is the 
uh, approach uh, of the organization. It is uh, more systematic, uh, which means that um, uh, the project focuses on improving vocational education, the conditions of uh, good governance, and also supports the regional cooperation between Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. Um, and uh, this project enabled Georgian private sectors uh, to create uh, associations. And uh, this was one of the first steps uh, for collaboration and connection. So um, as a final remark, uh, I would say that uh, there is a lot to do uh, still. Um, um, the crucial and first steps uh, have been done. Um, the legislative, in terms of legislation, uh, the start of the reforms, uh, but um, the crucial components as the platform, uh, the tools for non-traditional uh, co-production, as well as multi-dimensional uh, governance, which means that a private sector should have not only a consultative role, but also the ownership uh, on this service, um, as, as well as the third uh, spectrum, um, the, that the third sector is provided by the welfare service, um, in these dimensions, uh, the gaps should be filled. Um, the import uh, from Georgian, uh, from German um, wet uh, model be a good solution, but of course, um, only to import the elements is not enough. Uh, and uh, this imported elements should be socialized uh, and uh, absorbed uh, on the uh, local contextual uh, basis. And um, these uh, three uh, factors are essential um, for uh, the future of the service and for the transformation um, to the demand-driven um, vocational system. Um, and um, the future um, needs, uh, the future of vocational education needs the steps in order to um, correspond uh, to the future scenarios, um, like the ones uh, that have been developed by European Union. A uh, European Union had developed three um, great, uh, huge scenarios with, uh, on the basis of pluralistic approach, distinctive competences and special um, responses. And uh, these three competences, uh, these three elements could enable to develop uh, in Georgia this pluralistic based approach um, and also uh, to make the service more uh, sustainable and yeah the, the, then um, I hope that um, the gaps will be filled in and we will get the uh, chance to provide this uh, capital and um, the private sector will get the chance uh, of and feeling of the uh, shared ownership. These this are the things uh, and the um, dimension where we have to work more. Thank you. <laughs> I'm ready for the remarks, questions, and uh, yeah. Thanks, Mariam. It sounds like there certainly is a, a lot to be done to improve the situation. Um, and as the you know the digital age is is still fairly new, fairly recent, you know probably thirty years, um, and so um, over time, hopefully, uh, we'll have a, a better understanding about these systems and how we need to use these systems to to support uh, vocational education and training more effectively. So we'll we'll have some questions and discussion. So we have a few in the chat already, but feel free to to either put up your hand uh, within Zoom if you like, or to to add some additional questions into the chat. And we'll get through those questions sort of one by one in the order that they've come in. So I think the first question um, was from Marion. Did you want to, to ask your question, Marion? Yes, fascinating. Thanks, Tristan. And um, uh, Marion, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not an expert in the VET system, but I've had a lot to do with it over the years. Uh, here in Australia. So uh, I will probably when I send this to my friends that you know, might be still asleep in the vet sector here in Australia, they'll sort of say, why didn't you ask her about this? So, but anyway, I'll do my best. Uh, but we, 
interface a lot with the vet sector in the university sector here in Australia. So it's not a sector that I don't understand. Um, and so my first question was, and I think you addressed this, um, that was my first question was, is the private sector in Georgia um, driving this change? Because what we found here in Australia was that a lot of the, the change in the interface and the, the delivery and a whole lot of things has been driven with uh, by the vet sector um, because they are, have started to compete directly into the university sector in the longer term. So we get students that fold in from the vet sector into the university sector. Um, and so a lot of the competition has been driven by the private firms here or the private vet providers in the, here in Australia. Is the same happening in Georgia? Um, so the, thank you for the question. Um, so the question is whether there are like uh, competition between universities. Did I get uh, the question right? Uh, and no, 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 no. I'm just actually asking there's private vet providers. There's private, private. Uh, yeah. No, uh, no, actually, this was also a challenge uh, for the private sector in Georgia um, because um, there was the, the institutions uh, had to work and uh, kind of promote um, and uh, make private sector ensured that vocational education could be an investment and could provide um, a qualified labor force because it was also for, for, for the private sector it was also like completely not completely maybe but something new um, and uh, first steps uh, that have been uh, adopted and developed was um, at the university uh, free university uh, where this first college um, was founded um, mm -hmm. and from that time um, the private sector there were there, there was the necessity to promote vocational education not only for the youth but also for the private sector like to make them ensure it is something good you invest in in people and you need this like because you have the stability uh, to get the qualified human capital and it's something good and it's like the, the steps in this directions is uh, now also ongoing yeah because again, can't the students uh, or uh, is there any restriction on uh, the youth undertaking education anywhere um, it, within Georgia because now we have vet providers online so they can actually get these qualifications from anywhere around the world and, and that's sort of what I'm, I'm sort of trying to figure out how the government can try you know are they trying to control the sector or are they aware of you know that in actual point of fact the, the young people will probably say, I'll go and do this training course. Um, so, uh, you know, is the government actually trying to control all of this is, is probably the question from that because trying to actually stop the private sector getting involved is, is a very difficult thing given the online environment. Um, no, um, maybe... Um problem um to be honest um my, my research was also a little bit um hindered because of this pandemic situation mm -hmm. um because uh, i had the plans to travel to georgia and to have uh, this face-to-face -face interviews it's uh, has an another asset <laughs> asset and advantage in the research uh, but unfortunately i hope that in the summer it will be able um, but as far as I could, um, the interviews that I conducted uh, online and um, the official information and uh, the statements from the government, um, they were like calling private sectors to use the vocational education as a chance and to um, cooperate, I would say, and also um, 
to use the tools of the online tools. But uh, with respect to the online learning, um, the, the colleges uh, that, that uh, are um, based on in at the universities, not, not um, independent colleges that say so, um, they had better equipment and uh, better capacity to um, continue this online stand, um, online learning uh, than um, the um, the coll colleges uh, that didn't have any mm. connection with the universities. And it's all about the finance and uh, limited resources. Yeah. Okay, I'll have a think about that. Tristan, do, uh, I had other questions, but do we want to give somebody else a chance to talk? Yeah, I might ask one of my questions and we can come back to one of yours. Um, it's, it sounds, Mariam, from your presentation, it sounds like the, the German model for vocational education and training works quite well for co-production. But I guess I'm always looking for, for how could it be better? So I was wondering if you're aware of any, any places where it perhaps the, it works really well, like perhaps even better than, than Germany. And also how perhaps an understanding of social capital when applied to to understanding these digital systems for, for VET might actually improve those systems? Um, I know that uh, Estonia uh, had a really great, um, much more um, huge steps uh, with respect to the um, e-government um, and um, with um, digitalization and online resources. Um, and integration in a vocational education system. Um, and also um, I came up with uh, several articles um, about the um, Australian, um, the, the approach in Australia, how they uh, change and try to reform it. Um, and um, the second question was about well, about social capital, because, you know, with an understanding of social capital, we can see how uh, things like creating social identity or shaping social norms or building trust, you know, in any of these, these kinds of important aspects of social capital, whether or not we can design digital systems to, to encourage those things to occur or to, to make use of those things to produce better outcomes. And I think that quite often you know, developers of digital systems are specialists in IT, you know, they, they know how to develop yes. digital systems, but they don't necessarily have, you know, the understanding and expertise of things like social capital. Um, and so I, I sort of asked that question more broadly, not necessarily of just of you, but of, of everybody here about, you know, how could we use an understanding of social capital to, to sort of reinvent these systems or to consider how these systems could be a little different than they are to produce better outcomes? Um, maybe um, the, the crucial aspect is uh, to um, create the mechanisms uh, and to give um, both stakeholders the guarantee uh, and to empower the trust between the stakeholders. And here comes, um, here have um, the special importance, in my opinion, um, the legislative norms um, as uh, the law in Germany on e-government or um, the regulations about the open data, um, because the data is the uh, driving uh, force of cooperation in the online space. Um, and if um, it is not um, safe, um, then um, the trust uh, might be limited and uh, broke. But, um, it's, but I think sometimes there are a lot of um, too much uh, burdens and too much regulations um, can be also not so positive. Uh, and um, yeah, one has to find the balance, I guess. Yeah, I completely agree about the balance because quite often you see that for people to be able to engage and collaborate, they need access. But at the same time as needing to provide access, there needs to be those controls and those privacy and, and the restrictions on the data. 
And so um, getting that balance right and, and most effective, I think, is really important. And, you know, an example that we saw here in New Zealand during the pandemic was um, some of the, the district health boards wanted access to, to individual, you know, to, to personal information of people so that they could get in contact with people and provide personalised services. But the, the centralised system um, had concerns over privacy and didn't want to hand out that data you know, make that data available to the to the uh, regional health providers. And so you, you end up with this, this sort of um, tension between privacy and security and therefore trust against access and participation and actually doing things. And it seems like the same sorts of, of challenges probably exist in, in vocational, educational and training space as well. Uh, Marion, should we move on to your question next? Your next question? Ah. Uh. Uh, I've got so many questions. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think about your question. Um, I'm just the first question was I'm wondering what data is available to support the success of the German. Does German have co-production? Firstly, do they actually make that data free, uh, free and clear? Um, uh, with the German model, so what? What measures do, does the German model put out measures and everything like that in terms of what data do they have if they're actually co-producing? So I'm, I'm try, kind of asking what access do you have to any social capital information in the German system or anywhere really? Um, if I uh, got the question right, if not, then please correct me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, the um, while comparing German and Jordan um, cases mm -hmm. uh, with respect to the social capital um, is also plays important for the local context um, and how the uh, vocational education was structured. And in comparison to Georgia, Germany has a long standing history and it was like a part of their culture. So what I want to say is that um, offline, um, this cooperation and co-production was already within this service uh, because the responsibility was from the beginning shared between private and uh, public sectors. And it was the product uh, of their cooperation. So as I understand, as, an, I, as I see, the German, uh, the main challenge and goal for Germany was to move this uh, offline co-production, the traditional one, to the online, to the non-traditional, and to integrate in their cultural background all these uh, e-government portals, um, instruments, information and communication technologies to enable stakeholders to cooperate online and create the social capital mm. whereas in georgia we have the other problem uh, we had to create first the offline um, conditions for producing the classical co-production and then find the ways and role models to somehow turn this in the online uh, space um, mm. So, both in online and offline terms, the thing, the service was for, for us new. Um, the, but um, it could have like the assets because we can use um, the role models and examples from, from other countries um, that have already managed to transform their cultural backgrounds in with from this dimension into the online uh, spectrum. Um, mm. Yeah, but um, as I mentioned, Georgia had the um, like double um, ch challenge and uh, goal uh, because we didn't had have, have this uh, background um, and the basis. We have to first of all like understand uh, what are the efforts uh, of the vocational education how does it um, um, how does it create 
um, the conditions for cooperation between stakeholders, uh, what can we create and get from this? Um, and also, I think that um, on the international level, what, what I've read and what I see, um, the um, norms and uh, changes like the sustainable goals, uh, the agenda uh, of the United uh, Nations, it also promoted uh, the service and its importance because uh, the vocational education is the, um, is, uh, is the goal of the first uh, sustainable goal and also demonstrates that uh, it is a transfer to other sustainable goals. And mm -hmm. also what European Union did, um, this uh, future scenarios uh, to 2035. Uh, um, but um, yeah, but the thing is that Georgia had to first understand and like um, to um, absorb and to feel uh, good uh, with the, the service and definition and then transform other countries uh, as Germany, they had another um, um, goal. They already knew what, what, what was uh, the vocational education service and what are the assets. And they had to integrate um, the um, information and communication tools. But um, this is my, um, <laughs> this is my opinion. So <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure that other experts have uh, other um, yeah, position and uh, may not agree, but this is the um, spectrum that I see and uh, yeah. Marion, did you want to move on to your next question as well? Because it seems quite related. Oh, uh, the students as partners one? Yeah. Um, yeah, because I'm actually seeing this as a, uh, with uh, Mariam mentioning the involvement of the United Nations rather United Nations and uh, sustainable goals that actually fits with our long time long-term uh, potential driving of a special interest group around the social capital um, and I'm wondering to, uh, to ask I'm sort of moving around in my world uh, Aram, and we have this phenomenon that's called um, uh, students as partners. Uh, now, is that part? I've actually just been keeping a rough eye on that within my space, etc., as an educator. But is that a worldwide movement where the students are starting? Is that what you're talking about? Is the kind of co-production um, of uh, of knowledge? Uh, opportunities and, and those sorts of things. So say, for example, they'll do courses, our students will do courses simplistically put where they actually uh, co-produce, um, you know, assessments, etc., and information. Is that is that what we're talking about here? And is this students as partners, you know, a really big movement in the younger generation? Um, I think um to um encourage and empower uh, the youth uh, and uh, um the, the students um the important and driving role um should be played um by the system of career consulting uh -huh. um i i think uh, in in terms of georgia because it has been also a problem um mm. In my generation, I could say, <laughs> uh, because my sister is uh, 25 years old, and I see that uh, in her generation, some positive steps are already done, yeah. um, and they try be and it, it because because they have more opportunity to study abroad and to see um, what the um, demand on labor market is. Uh, but in my generation and still um, the system of career consulting is not well developed and um, mm -hmm. when I go to this website that I showed you um, this comparison uh, between German career consulting and Georgian 
in case of Georgia, go get only the information publication, what which are the um, which is not really helpful. They, there is missing this two way communication and feedback. Um, should be more active and interactive. And then um, when when the career cons uh, consulting the system and element is uh, strong. Um, the, the, this has the positive influence then over um, co-production between the youth, between the students and the stakeholders, because the young people and the students see that there are, are the opportunity and um, they can have um, well-paid uh, job uh, and be successful on the labor market. But if you don't give um, this window for consulting, um, then um, yeah, it's um, it's just like publishing publishing the information uh, without two way communication and feedback. Um, I think um, the encouragement of the student and youth uh, and partnership um, will be hard. Yeah, that's fascinating because uh, you know the, the two actually move very closely in tandem, don't they? So. I'm thinking two special interest groups that actually co-correlate, Tristan. <laughs> yeah, it is very interesting, for sure. It is fascinating. It's career development, you know, I'm not sure. But we're actually sort of trying to look at what special interest groups we could establish. So that's fascinating, Maria. Yeah. yeah. So we have someone with a hand up. Georgie, would you like to um, unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes, thank you. Uh, hello, Mariam. Uh, oh, it hello. was very interesting. Uh, interesting uh, uh, presentation, uh, uh, and it, it is very necessary for our society and for our country for development. Uh, but um, as a citizens of citizen of Georgia, uh, I can say that it's not very popular um, uh, with in our society. Uh, uh, as a school teacher, I would say that uh, very few few pupils uh, go to wait. Uh, uh, with colleges, with schools. Uh, uh, what is the reason uh, why it is not popular it, uh, it in our society? Is not it connected to the um, uh, history, to the culture uh, uh, that everybody prefers uh, to have a high, uh, high, high education diploma than um, which uh, diploma um, is not it uh, connected to uh, somehow to the prestigious moment in our society? Thank you for the question. And um, um, are you in Georgia or anywhere? Are you? Because, uh, I can see, yes. Um, okay, may I ask where do you teach in Georgia or? Um, Okay, and um, then I will start with the answer. Um, yeah, I think um, uh, that's a true fact um, that, um, as, I, as I've mentioned, this location of education has been um, not so popular between uh, all stakeholders. And maybe also it is also a um, contextual factor that hinders the uh, collaboration um, and somehow slows down the transformation of this uh, process to the, to the um, online space. Um, but uh, here, in order to overcome this problem, um, I think that once again, the career planning and consulting is really important and the youth need that. Um, the young generation should see um, that uh, Work it, and they should see that there is also the chance to try like to transfer from vocational education then to the academic education or that is a good opportunity to find a job and uh, it's better than uh, to sit at home with the diploma and uh, um, to be unemployed because we have really high rates of the youth unemployment. But uh, you are right, um, it is, this is it's not really um, popular and not so 
um, yeah, demanding um, in our country and in our context. Um, but um, the consulting opportunity, the career planning, um, the active involvement of the stakeholders and this feeling uh, giving the state, uh, private stakeholders this ownership feeling and not only uh, supportive um, could help to overcome this problem and um, could help to open new opportunities and sector. Thank you. Okay, do we have any, any final questions? Feel free to put them in the chat or put up your hand if you have a question. Uh, Marion, did you have any more questions? Uh, you're on mute. Sounds like you're saying no. No, no, I'm just looking up students as partners. Sorry, and uh, Marion, I actually stopped sharing rather than interrupt you. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I was going to sort of say, can you stop? Uh, <laughs> did you want to stop sharing? But I just did it for you. Thank you. Uh, now, Tristan, I, I, I think I'm just fascinated by everything, all the concepts here, et cetera. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I think, I think we can wrap up this session. Um, we'll stop the recording and then we can have a little bit of informal discussion afterwards. Yeah. Um, the next webinar we have is in two weeks' time and it's going to be on social capital and promoting uh, mental health for young people. And this is a PhD presentation by Kennedy Sigodo, who is, has done some really interesting research using a Delphi study, basically to ask experts what they think are the main um, implications for social capital and mental health. And he's gathered a, a lot of really interesting findings from that. So he'll be presenting the results of that research in, in two weeks' time. So that's the 4th of February. Um, and it's at 7 p.m. Uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So I think that's slightly no, it's the same time as, as this, this presentation. Okay, so let's wrap up there. Um, Marion, thanks very much for your, for your presentation and for your time. Thank it was you. really fascinating and um, really interesting uh, discussion as well. So thank you very much. I'm also really grateful. <laughs>